Hi, I'm Pat Fox, and I'm the head football coach at Milford High School. And what I want to do today is talk to you a little bit about wing tee option football. And we're going to start off our option discussion today with our base wing tee package. It's a, it's a priority for us offensively to maintain our wing tee identity as we integrate triple option and double option into our attack so that we continue to keep defenses off guard and limit their ability to defend us. When we talk about building an offense, we want to start by building a foundation of attack. We are going to use the fundamental base Delaware wing tee offense and integrate triple option into it. We're going to start by introducing the different components of the offensive series. First, we want to discuss choosing our system. Is the system sound? Will the system match our talent? Can our athletes perform the individual techniques of the system? Do we have the practice time to teach the individual technique? And does the staff have the knowledge to install the system? Does the system give us long-term ability to compete for championships? When you select an offensive system, it's very important that you ask yourselves the following questions in order to create the best system that allows you to compete at the highest level for your kids over the course of time. We believe that the wing tee option attack allows us to compete every year for championships. The wing tee has a diverse attack that allows you to match your players' talents with their abilities. The offense features interrelated blocking schemes that promotes conflicts within the defense. Each offensive series provides for multiple attacks, and the wing tee as a system has a dynamic play-action attack. The system has been time-tested and has a time-tested teaching methodology and the three-back system provides for great misdirection. The wing tee option attack allows us to stretch the defense with great width with the option game and attack it with both option and wing tee um, type plays. The first of the mechanics that we're going to discuss today is our series. and We're going to get into the organizational part of the offensive system. We do not use traditional Delaware numbering system. We, we, name, we, we label our offensive series um, by numbers. Our, our 10 series is our dive option of tack. Our 30 series is the traditional belly series. Our 40 series is the cross buck series. The 50 series is our lead sweep and our lead power series. And the 60 series is jet sweep. When we integrate our offensive system, we like to use a multiple, a multiple cadence, which allows for us to keep the defense off guard. We find that when we go on sound or just use a color blue, what happens is we, we utilize plays without motion. It gives us a chance to get the ball snapped quickly and change the tempo of the game. Our quick cadence goes as follows. Red, set, go. And when we go on one, we like to use a color and a number, a color and a number, red, set, go. And this allows us to use any type of motion that we want to in the system. Um, when we go on to, we also use a color and a number, color and a number, red set, go, and go for the second cadence, which keeps the defense off guard. When we call plays, what we want to do is we want to call plays from an offensive series to the holes that they are located. Um, we also like to label the blocking schemes that are utilized to keep it clear for our offensive linemen. So if we're trying to run the ball in the, in the option series and we make our play call, first we give the formation, then we give the series, then we give the whole of attack, and then we give the block. So our play call could be ace 12 veer. Now, if a play has the word counter, salary, or bootleg attached to it, these are misdirection plays, and they go in an action away from the play call. So in our offense, Sally is a counter, and when we want to talk about running counter off the 12 veer action, we call the play Ace 12 Sally, faking the 12 and coming back and sallying away or countering away from the play. We use a traditional wing tee alignment in many of the things that we do. The first thing we want to talk about is our offensive line splits. We want to have our offensive line splits 
vertically as deep as possible. We tell our offensive line to take their down hand and place it on the heel of the center. This provides us for maximum depth, depth and also allows our line, our line to be legal within the rules, but breaking the belt line of the center. We want to have a two-foot split between center and guard, and we also want to have a two-foot split between guard and tackle. Our tight end split can vary, working from three to five feet. We want to expand versus eight-man fronts and be closer to three foot versus a seven-man front. The alignment of our offensive backs is slightly different than a traditional Delaware attack. We'll start with our fullback. We want to have our fullback's heels four yards directly from the front tip of the ball. This is the ball's width, a little the width of the ball, or the length of the ball, excuse me, um, closer than a regular wing tee attack. We feel that extra, that extra distance gives us a better chance to run the dive option attack. Our fullback is in a two-point stance, and he's directly behind the center with his heels at four yards. We take our halfbacks, and we do not play our halfbacks in a wingback and a halfback alignment. What we want to do is we want to play our halfbacks in a left and a right halfback position, and they are either playing dive back or wing back. It's important that we do this so teams don't have the opportunity to gang up on us and say that we have a halfback and then we have a blocking back. We always want to utilize a left and a right halfback, both of them learning both the dive back and the wing back alignment. We'll start with the dive back. The dive back will thatch or split the outside leg of the offensive tackle. His heels are also at four yards depth. When we ask a running back or a halfback to line up in the wing back alignment, we tell him to go three and a half yards, his outside foot, three and a half yards from the outside foot of the tackle and two yards deep from the front tip of the ball. The alignment is important for us because it helps in the relationship of the option. We're slightly tighter than the traditional four yard width provided by the Delaware system, but this allows us to get into pitch relationship quicker. Here's a diagram of our alignment. Our left halfback is in, a, in the dive back position, position. He's thatching the outside leg of the tackle. Our fullback with heels at four yards is directly behind the center. And the right foot of our right halfback, who's now lined up in the wing back alignment, is three and a half yards from the right tackle. We have a multitude of formations, and I feel it's important that you try to explore as many offensive formations as you can. If you use multiple formations, you create great conflict for the defense, and all you're really doing is moving your halfbacks from dive back to, to, to half or wing back alignment and moving your ends from tight ends to split ends. Let's take a look at some of our two back formations. The first formation is wing formation. When we use wing formation, we utilize a halfback with a tight end, and on the opposite flank, we have a split flank and a halfback in the dive back position. When we, go tight, when we go split end over or unbalanced, we call that orange, and we just move the split end over to the tight end side. So on the strong side, we have a split end flank with a tight end and a wing. We also use a slot formation, which on the tight end side of the formation provides for us a tight end and a dive back and to the split end side provides a split end and a slot. Sometimes on the goal line we like to use what's called over formation where we take the split end and slot formation and move him over to the tight end side. This provides width in the formation to the tight end surface. If you take a look at the over formation, this gives us an opportunity to run off tackle strong and still provide us for the option game to the slot side. Also in the two back set, we like the loose formation, which is wing with a split end expanded. And we also like unbalanced loose, which is orange, orange wide, right or left, and over wide, right or left. We also have an array of one back sets. It seems like since we've gotten to the option game, we like the one back sets to put stress onto the defense, specifically the load block in a 4-3 defense to the stack backers. Red and blue formation provide for a wing and a slot edge. When we want to go on balance, we take the split end and we move him over, and we call it Rust. Our kids named it a few years back because Orange was one of our unbalanced sets, and they named it Rust. Um, no, no logic to it except that when kids name things, they have a tendency to remember it. Um, 
When we go down, we also have ACE formation. And when we look at ACE formation, we utilize two split ends and two slots. The unbalanced formation out of ACE is wide, and we do use the wide formation quite a bit. It's been a great set for us. Motion in the wing tee. It's important that you utilize different types of motion in the wing tee, specifically the three-step motion. This allows you to take your half back, and we want him to leave as late as he can and as fast as he can so that the defense can't change their signals to their motion. We want to get the wing back to the half back alignment, and we want to get the, him there so that he can be part of the offensive tack on the opposite side of the formation. Twirl motion is the exact same action as three-step motion. However, on his third step, he will plant and return in the direction of the motion that he came for. And this provides a little misdirection in our motion game. Rip and Liz motion are motions by the slots that cross the center in flat action. Jumps and tags also have become a big part of our offense. When we talk about jumping, we're talking about moving our formation. When we trade, we take our tight end and we move him from one side or the other, changing formation strength from balance to unbalanced. Sometimes we move our halfbacks with him, sometimes we don't. One of the jumps that I've really liked over the course of time is when we go from a tight end, when our tight end goes to a split end and our split end slides, out to the, or slides down to the tight end position. This changes the formation and when people play a reduced front against us, it's been very good. And if you just want to change two formations, we'll say jump two, wing right to orange left or jump to wing right to wing left or jump to slot right to slot left and your players realign on the first sound. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to get into the nuts and bolts of the wing tee attack. We're going to focus this portion of our discussion on traditional wing tee plays. Wing tee plays have been great for us over the course of time and provide for us a great balance. We don't want to be known just as an option team. We want to be known as a wing tee option attack. If you're just a wing tee team or you're just an option team, people take different types of defenses and create great problems for you in blitzes and stunts. As we merge the offense, what we found out is the merging between the traditional wing, the traditional wing tee offense and a triple option attack has provided for more defenses to give us looks that are more vanilla and allow us to execute our offense against a simpler look. The first series that we're going to talk about today is the traditional cross buck, uh, cross buck series. The cross buck series, you can notice it by the fullback diving at the heart of the defense, the halfback swing, swinging, and the quarterback bootlegging away from its action. The three plays that we're going to discuss today is the traditional fullback trap, the buck sweep, and the waggle. When we talk about the cross buck series for us, we call it the 40 series. And the first play we're going to talk about is 40 and 41 trap. And on the board today, we are going to diagram 40 trap, and we're going to discuss the different teaching points or coaching points of 40 trap. The first thing I want to do is I want to talk about our tight end. Our tight end is going to make an evasive step, meaning he is going to step laterally with his inside foot, and he is going to rip beneath the defensive end or outside linebacker. We want him to climb. And if he sees quick flow by the linebacker, he'll engage him. But if he doesn't, he's going to climb for the free safety. We say his rule is evasive to free safety. Our tackle has a very important block. It's very important for our tackles to get on the linebackers. The key to the trap for the offensive line is creating great walls and getting our tackles up on the linebackers. If we're able to do these things, the fullback trap is a tremendous play. And with everybody playing penetrating defenses nowadays, the fullback trap has become a tremendous, a tremendous weapon in our offense and also forces people to slow down from running upfield. He too, the tackle, will take an evasive step. And his rule is evasive to backer. And when he's blocking the linebacker, we tell him to try to work his headgear across the linebacker because he's blocking for the fullback. Our guard, our play side guards rule, is gap down backer. First, his responsibility is he's going to step with about an 80 degree step 
and he is going to check to see if there's a player in the A gap. If there's a player in his gap, he's going to block gap. If there's no player in the A gap, he's going to work down to the nose. He's going to work down to the nose. If there is no nose guard, he will work backside to the linebacker, gap down backer. Our center's rule is post gap down, meaning if he has a man on him, we are going to block him with a post block or a base block with his head opposite the hole. He's going to work in conjunction with that down block who becomes the lead and the post lead double team. If there's no one to post, the center will work gap or down to take the place of the pulling guard and block his man. Versus a 50 defense, we want to get a tremendous post lead double team and create movement down the line of scrimmage. And create movement down the line of scrimmage. Our backside guard will take a drop step to 90 degree pull step to work in the hole, rubbing off the post lead double team. When he pulls, we want our guard to work into the hole to trap the first man outside the A-gap. We want to try to get our guard to work downhill in the hole and get his head inside the hole. It's very important for our guard to work inside out. Because when that defensive tackle reads the head of your offensive tackle, he's going to squeeze and try to wrong arm him. We know that's going to happen. We need to go to war with him. We need to get inside out. We need to get inside out and create a successful trap block. On the back side, our tackle will also make an evasive step and climb to the backer. If the backside tackle pinches the B gap, he will pick that up. He will pick that up. That is how we block a base 50 defense. That is how we block the base 50 defense in 40 and 41 trap. Now what I'd like to do is show you quickly how that changes when we're blocking more of an a, a even front look. As we said, as we said earlier, our tackles rules are evasive to backer. It is no different in a, versus a 40 defense. It is no different versus a 40 defense. We want our tackles to get inside and try to get his head across. Our guard without a gap player or a player to down block on will step flat and we tell him to reach with his center's down block, reach with his center's down block and block the inside backer. We tell him on his first step, reach out and try to grab the tail of your center to pull you through. We want him flat. That avoids when that backer comes and runs the crease that there's space in between. We want to make sure that he's flat enough. Our backside guard will have to tighten his angle. We'll have to tighten his angle to trap. And we try to work our tackle to the backer to help. That is how we are going to block an even front defense. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to work to the backfield action. I'd like to work to the backfield action. I think it's important that we start off and discuss the fullback and quarterback mesh. There's been a lot of discussion for our, for our kids, who has the midline, who doesn't have the midline in fullback trap. It's very important for us to have a great mesh point. And over the course of time, what we have done is we've told our kids there's a midline and that midline is to be shared. If there's a line, the width of a yard line, we want our fullback on one side and the quarterback on the other. We're running 40 trap. And what we want to do is we want our fullback to take a lead step with his play side foot and cross over. And cross over. On step two, he's going to share the midline with his quarterback and receive the ball. We tell our quarter, we tell our fullback to run and snug the power blocks, the down blocks. Stay away from the trapper. Take your hip and run it on the hip of your down block. Stay away from the trap block. 
Stay away from the trap block and snug that trap up in there off your power blocks. It's very important for our fullback to take this crossover step. The quarterback on his first step will reverse pivot. And when we ask our quarterback to reverse pivot, what we want him to do is when he reverse pivots, we want him to get big back to the defense and seat the ball. He will have, he will have the opposite side of the midline. When he extends the ball to the fullback, he will extend it at elbow width, snap it in from the seated position, snap it in, and bring his hands back. It's very important that the big back of the, def the, big back of the quarterback hides the ball from the defense. The reason we want our fullback to take this crossover step with the near foot is he will receive the ball on step two. And when he steps and crosses over and then receives the ball on step two, he's going to receive the ball on an open hip. When you receive the ball on the open hip, you reduce the opportunities to put the ball on the ground. That's very important. For our fullback, we want him to cross over step, receive the ball on an open hip, snug the double teams, and get to the second level, and get to the second level. Our quarterback, as he gives the ball to the fullback, will snap his hands back. Our slot, who will be using three-step motion out of red formation on this play, will come across in fake buck sweep. Our quarterback will reverse pivot, get big back to the defense. He will step and give and hand the ball at elbows wet, return his hands, and on step three, will fake the ball to the halfback within the framework of the body and break contain at four yards. We tell our quarterback and all our backs, when you fake, accelerate your fakes. Accelerate your fakes. Defenses move to rapid action. If you come off the mesh with the halfback with a level of acceleration, it greatly enhances the play. The halfback receives the ball and runs his buck sweep course slightly outside the D gap. The last two players I'm going to talk about are so important to the play. They are our play side halfbacks block and our split end. We tell our split end, release and get to cut off. We need him to cut off that corner for making a big play. We want to get inside of him and not allow him to stop that touchdown. That's a six point block. And if that young man can make that play happen and he can get in the open field and cut off that corner, our fullback is going to have a clear avenue for a touchdown. Our right halfback is going to make a pivot step. From his slight stagger, from his slight stagger, he is going to pivot and eye the defensive end. We don't want to contact him, but what we want to do is we want to influence him and get to the free safety. And get to the free safety. If our fullback breaks the second level, we then have a tight end and a wing back and a split end on two guys deep. And we have an opportunity for a great play. And great power blocks as our fullback continues through the hole and gets an opportunity for a great play. Now, here we are running against an even front. I want you to take a great look at the walls that we are building. It's so important to build walls in the trapping game. And we get an opportunity to build walls and we get our tackles on the backers, our fullback makes a big play for us. That is a tremendous wall for us as we're working downfield trying to get on top of the safeties with our wing back. And finally, a last cut versus an even front. You see another look at how we get a great trapping angle by our fullback and we get our tackles onto the backers and our fullback snugs the power wall and we see a six point block by our halfback downfield.
The second play in the cross buck series that we're going to talk about today is the traditional buck sweep. And the buck sweep was a great play for us for a long time and has returned to be a great play in our offensive system. It's a 40 series play. It's run at the 8 or the 9 hole just outside the D gap. So we call it 48 and 49 sweep. We'll start with our offensive line rules. What we want our tight end to do, and our tight end and our front side tackle have a very important job. We need them to stop penetration. We need them to stop penetration. Our tight end's rules is gap down backer. First, we want him to step with an 80 degree step, turning his play side foot 80 degrees and his back side foot 80 degrees in order to stop penetration. We want him to be able to stop penetration by taking his head and putting it across the block and blocking with the opposite shoulder. If no one is in the gap, we ask the tight end to go down and block down. If there is no one to block down, we ask the tight end to work to the backside backer. Our tackle, his rule is gap, down, read. And we tell him to read, we want him to look at the nose. If the center can handle the nose with his reach block, he can go right to the backside backer. If not, he has to stay and clamp on with the center with that combination block. His rules again, gap, down, read. And on this situation, he will read the nose to the backside backer. I think at this point in time, we're going to integrate the wingback's block. It's important for our wingback to establish a point of attack. And he will take the same pivot step he used in trap, and he will come and we tell him to down block that defensive end. That's a difficult block if you look at it just standing there. But you have to remember that that defensive end is reading the head of our tight end. And when our tight end steps down, he's going to step and squeeze. This allows for our halfback to get an advantage in the block and create a point. It's important that he establishes that block because the play comes off of his tail. The center, the center, we tell him to reach A. Reach A. The front side guard will lead the play and pull it about 135 degrees out or 4 o'clock. He will gain depth on his second step and flatten out on step 3. The key to the buck sweep is when he starts to come and attack the support player, we want him to dive into the hole and work inside out. We tell him, create it and make it like a trap block. Come off that down block, eye the wingback's tail, come into the hole and trap the support player. This allows him to have a better angle when that support player takes on his lead block. The backside guard is responsible for the front side backer. He will pull 90 and gain a little bit of depth and eye the backer. If that backer appears inside, he blocks him. If that backer sits, he comes around and he seals him. If he's at the line of scrimmage, he comes around and he kicks him out. The backside guard has the front side linebacker. Where the play breaks down is when the backside guard doesn't execute his block. We tell the offensive tackle, inside release, inside release, and chase above the play, trying to work to block that corner at seven to nine yards. That's the six-point block. That's the six-point block. We like to run this play from an unbalanced set. It removes the corner. If that happens, our corner, our, our split end will cut off the corner. As we move to the backfield, it's very important that you understand that the buck sweep does not go to the border. The buck sweep does not go to the perimeter like jet sweep. The buck sweep starts to the flank and comes off tackle slightly wider than the D, the D gap. We use the exact same steps that we did in trap. Our fullback will make an opposite foot lead. We'll make an opposite foot lead and block the backside A gap stopping the chase of the defensive tackle. Our halfback, who is now in the dive back position, he could be in the wing back alignment, it doesn't matter, will cross over step with his outside arm and leg, 
through the heels of the fullback. Our quarterback, who reverses big back to the defense, shares the midline with the fullback. Just like before, our quarterback, excuse me, will reverse, will reverse, and when he reverse pivots, we want him big back to the defense. On step two, the fullback will come by. We use a proximity fake. We do not use a ball fake. We do not use a ball fake. On step three, he will hand off to the halfback within the framework of his own body and snap his hands back to his hip region and break contain at four yards. Big back to the defense allows our quarterback, allows our quarterback to be a great ball handler and be more deceptive with the ball. His fake is vital to freeze that free safety for just a count. Our halfback will receive the ball. We take all our handoffs traditionally. We take our handoffs, we take our handoffs by creating a table, putting our thumb in the sternum, and take the pinky to the sky. This is different from a lot of wing T schools. This is the best way that we've learned to try to reduce turnovers, and we don't run a lot of counter crisscross, so the, the, the table handoff doesn't work. We don't utilize it as much as others. Now, our halfback will receive that ball traditionally and stay at a depth of four yards. As he receives the ball, he is looking for that tail of that wing back. He is going to make a 90 degree cut, plant vertically, get through the crease, and pick up the block of his tackle. This gives him the greatest opportunity for success in the buck sweep. The last play of the cross buck series that I'm going to talk about today is our play action pass. We call it 448. We add a third digit to the play to, to, to state that it's a play action pass. The extra four does that. 448 and 449 boot pass or waggle. What that means is we are going to fake 48 sweep and we are going to boot away from the call. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with our offensive line. And I'm going to talk about the communications that we use. When we talk about the play side guard and tackle, what we would like to do is if we were running 449 boot, we would like our play side guard and tackle to execute a log block combination between the two of them. We feel that this gives us the greatest opportunity to get our quarterback on the flank. We tell our offensive tackle, his rule is to determine if he can down block the first defensive lineman a gap or wider. If he can successfully down block that player, we tell him, make a two call. Communicate that to your guard. A two call means we are going to work the cross action of the log block. And what I'd like you to do is as you study this, picture that defensive end starting to squeeze as our tackle comes down and blocks down on the first player outside the A gap. The play side guard will execute the log block aggressively looking like he's going to trap or kick out the end and then at the last minute wheeling him. That down block of the offensive tackle forces that defensive end to squeeze and promotes an easier log block for your guard. That doesn't always happen. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes when our front side guard is trying to down block the player in the A gap, he's too far down in there. So what we tell him is make a one call. Tell your guard, everybody's going to block one on one. Make a one call. And our tackle will aggressively block the man on him and the guard will aggressively block back to what would have been the original tackle's man. The rest of the offensive line rules are very simple. Our center's rule is on gap down. In the 40 defense, he has a player in his gap, and he is aggressively going to block him. Our backside guard is going to pull 90, crossover step, and block four. 
Now, there's going to be a timing and a mesh with the fullback on this. That's why we want our guard, when he pulls 90, turns his hip 90, crosses over, we do not want his momentum to stop. We can't start his engine again if we stop it. What we want him to do is we want him to keep his momentum moving but not run into the fullback because the fullback's going to travel in the same pay, path and the backside guard will come, at, come after him. And an even defense on gap down would bring him back. We get the crossover step and we'd only pull one guard with the one call. The backside tackle is critical for the protection of a quarterback in boot and waggle. What he does is he takes a pull step and when he pulls, he eyes that inside linebacker. If that inside linebacker comes, he's going to block him at the point of attack. It's important for our tackle to see that backer. If the backer stays at depth, he will turn and hinge and block the defensive end. It's the same on the opposite side. It's the same on the opposite side. This allows us to account for a blitzing backer on the back side and also account for the defensive end. Now, what I want to do is I want to come over and talk briefly about thought process, thought process in the boot pass. We tell our quarterback, if we are running the boot or waggle to the tight end flank, if we are running the boot or the waggle to the tight end flank, it is a run-pass option. We want him to break contain. If he can run the ball for six to eight yards or get us a first down, we tell him to take it. We want to force the perimeter. We want to force the perimeter with that quarterback breaking contain. That's much more difficult to do to the open side. We tell them, if you get pulled up, settle for the fullback and the tight end. We're going to take a look at those different routes as we put up an even front. As we put up an even front, We want to use the exact same backfield action and make the play look as close to trap and sweep as possible. Our offensive line on the front side, we think they can execute a two call here and we might get a good log. Our center works gap down and our backside guard pulls for four. We get a good check pull. Our quarterback and our fullback work the exact same mesh that they did before. They work the exact same mesh that they did before. However, this time, as our fullback comes off the mesh, he's looking to find that crease through the X block or at worst across the top of it. The fullback must get in the flat to make this play go. We must get the fullback in the flat and to run an arrow route at four to six yards. When he gets to the numbers, sit him down. If he gets to the numbers, sit him down. We have to get our fullback from four to six yards. Our halfback will come in motion, or if he's in the dive back position, cross over, fake buck sweep, and sink and settle off the tackle's tail to pick up the backside edge. To pick up the backside edge. Our, our quarterback will come off the mesh and break contain at four to six yards. You get a choice with your split end. For the last few years, we've been running a 14 back to 12. Prior to that, we were running a flag route. We didn't get the flag route a whole lot. We didn't get the flag route a whole lot. So now we run an out cut or a comeback at 14 back to 12. Our tight end will inside release or easiest release and we tell him to get to 12 to 18 yards. And if you are the crossing route, never pass, never pass the hash. Never pass the hash. If you get to the hash, sit down to create spacing. With the pivot step, the backside halfback 
will push vertically and try to get in the crease between the corner and the free safety. We tell our quarterback, if you see the fullback as you break contain, give him the ball. If you get pulled up, if you get pulled up, work tight end back to fullback. Work tight end back to fullback. Oftentimes what happens, oftentimes what happens is as the quarterback comes off the mesh, there'll be a stunt from the backside. We'll get a good log block, and the backside guard who has to cross over behind the fullback will kick him out. If the quarterback tries to break contain, he's going to get sacked. He's going to get sacked. So what we tell him is when you feel that pressure, when you feel that pressure and you come off your bootleg, when you feel that pressure as you break contain, step up into the throwing lane, slide into the throwing lane, and deliver that to the tight end coming or the fullback that should be right in your face and you should see that. We'll pick up the stunt of number four with the backside guard and we'll work tight end to fullback. Now, when you run waggle to the tight end flank, when you run waggle to the tight end flank, your opportunities for it to become a run play are greater. Your opportunities for it to become a run play is greater. The reason it becomes greater is we're going to inside that tight end, we're going to inside release that tight end to influence that defensive end inside as we run him off to the corner. Same action in the backfield. This time we get three step motion and we settle. Now, the number two receiver is no longer your tight end. Your number two receiver is the slot and he will run the drag. It doesn't matter what formation he's in. It's a concept. Number two on the backside runs the drag. Number three runs the skinny post. And oftentimes what happens is when you run it to the tight end, you have a great chance to break contain. And when your quarterback gets outside, great things happen. All right, let's take a look at some video. We're running 449 boot to the tight end flank. And we're going to come back and throw the ball to the slot. As we talked about, the number two receiver should settle right on the hash. He does a great job of settling on the hash as we get tremendous spacing. Our quarterback doesn't quite break contain and he gets pulled up, but it was a great play for us because of the technique of number two on the back side. Here it comes again. Right here you get the two call, front side guard out, pulling and releasing. Our tight end got jammed up pretty good at the line, but there sits number two in the crossing route. A quarterback delivers a strike. Now, we come back and we're at the tight end flank again, but this time we're throwing the home run ball on the backside. The one thing that I failed to mention earlier is when we throw the backside post, we only throw it when it's called from the box. We make a big play. Finally, as we talked about earlier, the one thing we like most about this play is when it becomes a run-pass option. Here the quarterback doesn't get contained and makes a great play running it on his own. The waggle has been a great play for us throughout the last 16 years as we've run this offense. It's given us a great opportunity to create big plays in a hurry for our team. Our next segment as we move on, we're going to talk about the inside belly and the belly series. The cross block belly series has been a great series for us and we've used the system for the past 18 years or this series for the last 18 years. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about the belly, the tackle trap counter, the belly keep pass, and the counter bootleg or what we call the counter naked play. One nice thing about the belly play is it gives the wing tee offense a play sort of like sprint draw where it's a deliberate developing play and allows the running back to sometimes cut back against the defense and use their own aggressiveness against themselves. What I want to do is I want to talk about the belly series 
in terms of how we execute it. Our belly series is tagged to 30 series, and we are going to run at the two and the three hole. So when we run belly, it's 32 and 33 X, the X meaning the cross block of the guard and tackle. We're gonna use the same rules with the one and the two call that we did with the waggle. Our front side guard and tackle are gonna determine if that tackle can successfully down block the first defensive lineman outside the A-gap. If he can, they'll make a two call. The tackle says to the guard, 2-2, two, two. The, the guard responds 2-2 two, two with an echo, and the guard will execute a trap block working inside out, inside out on that defensive end. We know the defensive end is gonna to try to squeeze us. We must come off the tail of the down block of the offensive tackle. Hopefully later in the, in the program, we'll have the opportunity to demonstrate this with you with the angle of the tackle and the angle of the guard. When we get this type of an inside out angle by our guard, we have a great opportunity for success. We tell our tackle, stop penetration. If that defensive tackle becomes lighter on his fingertips and is trying to cross your face, take your angle and tighten it down to about a 45 opposed to 80 degrees. Our backside guard, center, and tackle will all reach block, blocking to the front side gap. The key for our offensive linemen is to keep their shoulders square as they step 45 and cross over to engage the offensive line. We need our linemen to create, to create running lanes by having their shoulders square, not creating running lanes by turning their shoulders and allowing or forcing the running back to run to where he doesn't want to go. Very important to keep the shoulders square on the backside. Once again, in the one and two call, if that defensive tackle, the first defensive tackle, A gap or wider, is in a position where we can no longer down block him, they'll make a one call and the guard will block him and the tackle will block his man one on one. We prefer to cross block it whenever we can. Now, the play side halfback in our belly series is the lead blocker. The play side halfback is the lead blocker. We want him to take a fire step or a timing step. It's a slight jab step with his outside foot, with his outside foot that helps time up the play and allows the cross block to work as he works inside out on the first backer, to work inside out on the first backer. Now, one thing that we found out is since we've moved our fullback up, the steps of the fullback are critical. We need our fullback to save as much depth as he can possibly save. His steps, his steps as the fullback are flat, crossover, and flat, gaining no more than four inches per step. Let's see that again. We tell our fullback to step flat laterally, crossover, gain no more than four inches, and flat. When his third foot hits the ground, we want him to step on the inside edge so he doesn't float outside. We want to make sure as he's working flat, crossover, and flat that his shoulders are square. We want his shoulders square so if he gets an opportunity to cut it back, he can wind it back across the defense. On his third step, he begins to work downhill and attacks through the hole as he receives the ball. Our quarterback will reverse pivot and he seats the ball again in his belly like he does in most of the traditional wing tee plays. And what we ask our quarterback is when he reverse pivots and seats the ball, step slightly over the midline. On step two, extend the ball with two hands, and as you extend the ball, nod your head at the fullback. On step three, after you give the ball, snap your hands back to the belly pouch and step behind the fullback. Step behind the fullback so in case he winds it back, you're not in his way. 
we then tell them to break contain at four yards. Now, as we said, this is not just one play. This is a series. And it's very important for us to get great motion from our backside halfback. He'll utilize three-step motion. And on his third step, he will plant and work through fullback heels level to influence log the defensive end. To influence log the defensive end. It's very important because his block will help set up both the counter and the keep pass and the counter naked. We tell our corners, front side, cut off, back side, cut off. One thing about the fullback belly play, it gives you great opportunities if you have a great fullback to give him the ball and allow him to make plays happen. It's a deliberate play, but it's a great play for our offense. Now let's take a look at this on video. Through the cross block and lead the play for the fullback belly. We're going to get a chance to see this from the end zone shot. Our offensive lineman elected to make a one call on this, so it'll look more like an iso block than a cross block. Our halfback inserts through, makes a pretty good block as our fullback continues to run the belly play. Here's a cross block, an opportunity for our fullback to make a big play off the inside belly. The belly play with the twirl motion has been a tremendous complement to what we do with the midline. We get another one call on the inside belly. We're going to utilize twirl motion again. This time we get a chance to op the opportunity to execute a cross block. We get a good trap. The fullback sees it and winds it back, beats the man, and scores. Our fullback in the inside belly has an opportunity for great vision. Here's another cross block, cuts it back, and it's a great play. Sometimes when I'm going around talking about wing tee option football, people ask me, how come our fullback is not in a three-point stance? My response is simple. We're a wing tee school, and one of our base plays is running the belly. And for our fullback to have great success, he's got to be able to see blockers, and he can't do that when his hand's on the ground. We'll now move to the tackle trap counter. What we're going to do now is we're going to move into the tackle trap counter, which looks an awful lot like the inside belly, but what it does is it gives us a counter play without a guard pull. A lot of times when people are defending wing te teams, what they say is key the guards. That's why the tackle trap counter has been such a good play for us over the course of time. We're going to start with the blocking schemes. What we want our offensive tackle to do is make that same evasive step, same evasive step, and block the linebacker, evasive the backer. We tell our tackle, same as trap, same as trap. Our front side guard, his rules are lead to linebacker. His rules are lead to linebacker. If there is a post lead, he's going to be the lead in the double team. If there's no lead, he's going to block the linebacker. We tell him once again, reach for the tail of your center's block so that you can pull yourself through and create a better angle for blocking that inside linebacker. Our center's rule, post gap down or post gap lead. We tell our guard his rule is inside foot area block. If he has a man over him, he's free to block him. He's free to block him. But if we're playing 50 defense, if we're playing 50 defense, we tell him, make an inside step and square yourself and hold your area. 
If he goes downfield and continues to block the backer versus 50 defense, the backside tackle, when our tackle pulls, has space and can chase the play down from behind. We want him to create area to pick him with his hip. To pick him with his hip. What we've done is we've created walls, just like we did in the regular trap. We've created walls. And what we want to do is we want to create lanes off those walls for our ball carrier. Our tackle will pull 90 to inside of that, 90 degrees to drop step to trap the defensive tackle. We want him to work inside out, just like the guard did in 40 and 41 trap. We want him to work inside out and trap the defensive tackle. We know that defensive tackle can squeeze us. If they're great with the play, we may use an influence scheme, which we have done from time to time. But with so many teams playing upfield, we like the traditional scheme. This gives us a chance to get onto the linebackers, to get onto the linebackers, and create a great trapping angle and walls for our fullback or for our halfback. We'll come in motion. And the three-step motion in the belly game is very important. Our fullback will take a crossover step and aim to fill for the B gap. Our ball carrier, who we're going to fake now 33 counter, we're going to fake 33 counter and come back, or 33 belly and run 33 counter. What our halfback is going to do is he's going to take a flat wiggle. We tell them, just take that foot, pick it up, and wiggle your hip. Just give us a little motion away from the play. The fullback will come and fill and block the defensive end. The halfback will come through motion and work for that log influence. Our ball carrier will make his wiggle and use the same steps as the fullback does in belly, flat, cross, flat, and come shoulder square downhill, receiving the ball. Now, the key to this play is the quarterback. Our quarterback from the center, our quarterback from the center will take the ball and seat it high by his chest and step just shy of the midline. We tell him, put your chin on your shoulder. Shoulder your chin. Shoulder your chin. See the halfback. On step two, let step two take you to the halfback. Let step two take you to the halfback. Hand off inside at elbows width. Inside at elbows width on step three. And then continue to break contain. What happens as our quarterback reverses out? We have all in a line this great pot of people. We have our guard, our pulling tackle, our fullback, our quarterback, our ball carrier, and our motion guy all in the line of this linebacker. We've created a pot. And with that pod, we're going to burst out of it. And the ball, if it's handled correctly, and we're not lazy with our ball handling skills, you can't see until it's too late. Until it's too late. We want our halfback to take that ball and snug that power wall. If he clears the second level, we tell him, come back from where you came. Come back from where you came and pick up the block of your split end for the touchdown. This has been a great play for us. This has been a great play for us. And when our kids get to the second level and take it back, it's touchdowns. It's touchdowns. Let's take a look at some 30 and 32 counter. We talked about the pot action. If you take a good look, we have the tackle, the fullback, the motion man, the quarterback, and the ball carrier all in a position where our inside linebacker can't really see what's going on. This provides for great deception and really enhances the play. 
we get a great wall built. We get a great wall built, and our halfback does a great job of snugging that, and now coming back from the direction that he came for a great game. Now, we're going to have, this looks like it's going to be an exceptional pod that's produced. Our tackle is pulling. We're getting a pretty good full by our fullback. We get a good wiggle and crossover, and our motion is excellent. We come across. We're getting a great wall built. Snugs the wall. Does a very nice job. Good trap by our tackle inside out. We're getting a tremendous rush on top of the linebackers. And our halfback stays on the wall and gets the first down. There's an odd front. Our tackle's a little bit, a little bit wide. He should be more head in the hole. We have a good wall being produced, but our tackle's head's a little bit, a little bit too down the line. We'd like him more into the line. Our halfback compensates, stays on the wall, and makes a great play. Now versus an even front, a great pod's produced, a good wall's produced, and our halfback makes another good play. Now we're going to move on to the play action pass in the belly series. And what we like to do in the belly series is we like to throw what's called the keep pass. And it is also a run pass option for our quarterback, but allows us to throw the ball quickly and attack the defense at the flank as we use play action pass off the belly series. In the keep pass, we will utilize the same one and two call that we do in the waggle. If the tackle can't get to the def the offensive tackle can't get to the defensive tackle, he makes a one call and we aggressively block man at the point of attack. We prefer the two call, we prefer the two call, and we'd like to execute it this way whenever we can. On the back side of the keep pass, our offensive line rules are step and cup. And what we want is our, our guard to reach, protect the A, and turn back to the back side A. Step, reach, and cup. Reach, and cup. We tell our offensive line, if they have no threats from their reach arm to their partner's reach arm, work back side. Our fullback and our quarterback will use the exact same technique as they did in 32 and 33 belly. Our fullback will work flat, cross flat, and come downhill and help secure the B-gap region. We get great motion, three-step motion, and we log the defensive end. Our quarterback will take that ball, and just like he did in the belly series, he will, or the belly, he will reverse Seat the ball. On step two, he will extend it with two hands and nod his head. The nodding of the head is a priority to freeze the front side backer. We take our play side halfback, or the number two player, and number two will run a seam between the free safety and the corner. Our outside player will run a six to eight yard pivot out. As the quarterback comes off the nod fake and tries to break contain, he reads the strong safety. If the strong safety sits or widens, he pumps the ball into the seam on step five. I'll repeat that. If the strong safety sits or widens, he'll pump the ball into the crease in step five. If the strong safety sits and squeezes inside, the quarterback will continue on his path and deliver the ball to the pivot out. We can exchange their routes, and we let the inside receiver run an arrow, and we let the outside receiver run a post corner. We call that route keep switch. It's a simple change in routes that gives us more diversity in our offense, just by changing the way we use a route. We also will run keep pass off the down series, which I'll talk about later. But the keep pass is a tremendous play for us. If we could look at some keys to this play again, we need to get a great log block by that halfback. He cannot let this kid come upfield. 
we want to give it a clean surface for our quarterback. We want to give it a clean surface for our quarterback. When we run the seam route with number two, if we're going to throw the seam route, it's got to come out early. If not, we have to go to the out cut. As we take a look at some video on 332 and 333 key pass, we're starting this formation in slot. We're utilizing slot formation. Our halfback will utilize the log block from the dive back position by leaving in one step motion. Our quarterback makes a great ride or great nod fake, holds the ball a little long, has both guys open and puts it into the seam just a little late. This is earlier in the same game. We get a good fake. We prefer our edge to be a little firmer right here. We prefer a little bit firmer edge than that. We want to be more aggressive. The free safety bites on the fake and the slot comes free into the clear with great play action. This is to the tight end flank. We run it both ways. and We're pumping the ball into number two in the seam. Same concept, one to the flat, two to the seam on the play side. Coming off of motion, we're able to put the ball into the seam. Back to the tight end flank, one to the flat, two to the seam. Simple concept, much better on the front side with our blocking. This time we get a stunt in our face, we pick it up and put it into the slot. Our slot makes a great play after the catch. Shifting from wing to slot. A little bit, little bit quick on the fake as we put the ball into the seam. The last play action pass within the belly series that we're going to talk to, talk to you about today is the counter naked. Um, we like the counter naked as a play action pass because it gives us really great true play action. Sometimes in the waggle and sometimes in the keep pass, things don't look exactly like they do in the run game. However, in the counter naked, we get an opportunity to really utilize a tremendous scheme that is almost identical to the run scheme. When we first started putting this in, we were coaching very tight to the rules. We were having a lot of problems with the play. So what we did is we told the kids, run the run play and pull the ball and don't go downfield as the offensive lineman. And it really cleaned up an awful lot of problems we had, and the kids really understood it. So now we teach it this way. What we like to do is I, for the last few years, have liked to run this out of a tight end set. It allows our, our tight end flank. It allows our quarterback to get a chance to get on the edge if, if that defensive end squeezes. As we look to the board, I'm going to run counter to the right. I'm going to run counter to the right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it out of slot formation. I'm going to run the naked to the right. I'm going to fake it to the left. So I'm going to fake, fake 333 or 332 counter, and then we're going to go naked away from the counter play. Now, our, def our offensive line love this because it looks identical, it looks identical to what we do in the tackle trap counter. We tell our linemen, we tell our linemen to step like you're going to down or gap block with 80 degrees and then reach your gap. Step hard 80 degrees and reach your gap. Step hard 80 degrees and reach your gap. Step hard 80 degrees and reach your gap. Get to a point where instead of down blocking, where you're working down the line of scrimmage, when you step 80 degrees, come as you're going to down, as you contact, turn it into a reach block. We want to play with low hats on the line of scrimmage. We want to play with low hats on the line of scrimmage. Our tackle will come flat and pull just like he does in the tackle trap. We tell the backfield, run it just like tackle trap. Use your exact same technique. Fullback, crossover step, aim for the outside leg of that guard working towards the tackle. We tell our halfback, 
wiggle, flat, cross, flat. Fake the handoff and find the seam that you'd normally run in. Find that seam and block your seam that you would normally run in. What we like our quarterback to do is as he comes around, just like in the tackle trap, open shy of the midline, pinning the ball on his chest, takes his chin, puts it on his shoulder, eyes the halfback on step two. Take the ball and pin it to your chest if you're right-handed and you're running it this way and extend the open hand to your halfback. If you're very courageous and your quarterback's a little bit of a gambler, tell him to take a look back at his hand as it goes away. Return the hand to the ball and break contain. And break contain. Our tight end will inside release and run a corner route. Our tight end will inside release and run a corner out. Our fullback will break into the flat four to six yards and we'll get a skinny post on the backside. Now, what happens is you've been running the belly, you've been running the tackle trap, and you've created this tremendous pod here on the linebacker. It comes to a down like it's third and three or third and four, and you need a first down. It's getting hard in here to run the ball. You pull the ball and it freezes everybody, and this guy or this guy comes wide open. Once again, we need to get that surface clear on a great log block. Our quarterback, by using a great fake, will bring the defense to him and allow us to get outside. This true is a run pass. This is a run pass option for the quarterback. If he gets on the flank, good things can happen for our offense. What we're going to do now is take a couple looks at counter naked. The first one that we're going to take a look at, our quarterback breaks contain, but we don't do a great job at sealing the surface on the edge. He does a nice job of getting out there and makes a play and gets the ball to our fullback who ran a good route onto the flank. However, when you watch this next cut, our halfback does a great job of cleaning the surface, and we have the split end open on the flag route, and we also have the quarterback receiving the run pass option and decides to run the ball and does a great job breaking contain. Counter naked is an excellent change up to the belly series and allowed our offense to gain in the type of plays we run and gives us a true play action pass that resembles the offensive run play to a T. What I'd like to do now is we are going to go to our field demonstrations and we are going to demonstrate certain parts of the trapping or the kick out block and the seal block of the guards with our demonstration team. What we're going to do now is take a look at offensive line alignment from the field. Fellas, pre-snap please. On my cadence, take your hand and place it to the ground. Set. Hit. Our offensive line is as deep as legally possible. Their hands are on the ball of the center's ankle. We have a two-foot split between center and guard, a two-foot split between guard and tackle, and a three-foot split between tackle and tight end. We can extend this out to five feet. The first thing I want to talk about in the trapping game is the evasive step of the tight end and the tackle. The evasive step, we want our tackle and tight end to clear the down lineman freely and climb to the linebacker and free safety. Let's take a look on the field. Set. Hit. Very nice. Very nice. Both of them used a nice flat step and ripped appropriately. The first scheme we're going to take a look at on the field today is 40 trap. And we're going to run 40 trap starting with a 50 defense and then we're going to see how the internal blocking changes versus a 40 front. First, 50 defense. Pre-snap, fellas. Set. Hit. Nice. Really good. Really nice. Thank you, man. Now we're going to execute the trap versus the even front. What I want you to pay attention to on our one-step drill is watch the right guard reach for the center's tail and watch the angle of the left guard as he's trapping an even front. Bird dog, one step. Set, hit, nice. Okay, let's come back, 
Let's come back and go one step now. Sit. One step and freeze. Sit. Hit. Good. Our guard's angle as he reaches with his left hand will help if the linebacker's keen guards. Very good. Full speed now, fellas. Full speed. Trap right, 40 trap. Here we go. Nice bend in the legs in your stances, men. Sit. Sink your tail right tackle. Good. Sit. Hit. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Now we're going to take a look at the backfield action for the 40 series, starting with the 40 trap. Here we go. We're going to go bird dog first. Here we go. Sit. Step one. Hit. Nice crossover step quarterback. Let's turn big back to the defense. Let's turn big back to the defense. Sit. Hit. 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 Very nice. Jog it out, and that's good. Here we go. Full speed, men. Full speed. Quarterback, let's get big back to the defense. Halfback, let's make a nice 90-degree cut. Right halfback, let's get down on top of that free safety. Full speed. Here we go. Sit. Hit. Nice. Very good. Very good. First thing we want to talk about in the buck sweep is the down block of the front side tackle and tight end. It's imperative that we stop penetration. It's imperative that we stop penetration. Also notice the trapping angle of the front side guard as he works to kick out support. All right, fellas. All right, fellas, pre-snap, pre-snap. We're gonna bird dog one step. Sit, one step, one step, sit. Hit, 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 get a good frame, hit, 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 and jog it through, jog it through, good, nice. Here we go, full speed, full speed, right tackle, let's get our head across, let's get our head across and stop penetration. Here we go, set, full speed, set, hit, nice, nice, nice. Good. Very nice. Left tack, a little more effort coming across. Backfield, let's go. Now we're going to take a look at 48 sweep, trying to get a 90 degree cut with our right half back, our left half back, as the right half back establishes the down block. Set. Hit. Much better. Very good. Very good. We're going to take a look at the waggle or the boot pass off the sweep action. We call it 448, 449 boot. Attention to the one and two call on the front side. In this particular defense, the tackle feels he can down, down block the B-gap player so he makes a two call. We're going to take a look at that. Focus in on the right tackle on the crossover step on step two so he makes the easy mesh with the fullback. Here we go, gentlemen. Gentlemen, this is full speed. This is full speed. Please correct your splits right now. Two foot, two foot, and two foot. Pre-snap, pre-snap, pre-snap. Hands down, down, full speed, 448 boot. Sit, hit. Good, 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 good. Nice, very good. Now we're going to show you 448 and 449 boot. We're still using a two call on the front side. We're still using a two call on the front side. And we're going to try to have our quarterback get to the flank, break contain, and get the ball out to the fullback. Here we go. Stances. Stances. Full speed. Full speed. Hand down on my cadence. Set. Hit. Nice. Very good. Now we're going to take a look at what happens when we get a one call on the front side. As you can see, the defensive tackle has moved down into the A-gap, and our tackle is no longer confident that he can down block this man. What we're going to ask them to do is make a one call, meaning they're going to block one-on-one -on, -one on their respective defensive linemen. Here we go, gentlemen, full speed, 448 boot with a one call. Sit. Hit. Very nice. Now we're going to take a look at the belly series, and we're going to run the inside belly to the left, or 33X. 
We're going to demonstrate a two call with an X block by our front side guard and tackle and the back side is going to reach. What we're looking for on this play is our backside to keep their shoulders square, to keep their shoulders square to allow for cutback if that's part of the play for our back. Let's take a look. Pre-snap, pre-snap, full speed, sit, hit. Okay, let's try this again. 33X, 33X with a two call line. Left tackle and guard, make a two call to each other. 2-2, two, two, just like that. Good. Here we go. Set. Hit. Good, good. And very nice. Very nice. Good. Now what we're going to do is see what happens when we have to make a one call. Now, as our offensive line lines up at the line of scrimmage, as they line up at the line of scrimmage, and the defensive tackle moves down into the A-gap. He moves down into the A-gap the five techniques in his normal alignment. Okay. Now what's going to happen is our tackle can't reach inside. So we're going to make a one call. You're going to block base and you're going to get some help with the reach of your center before the center climbs off to the backside backer. Here we go. Bird dog. Bird dog. 33X with a one call. Let's make the calls offensive line. Pre-snap and let's down. Sit, hit, 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 good. Here we go, here we go. Full speed, full speed. This is 33X with a one call. Sit, hit, good. Now we're going to take a look at the belly, the backfield action for the inside belly or 33X. Here we go. Full back, we're going to work flat, cross, flat. Right half back, I need you a little bit wider. A little bit wider. Let's have great motion. You can log the end. Who will be me? Okay, here we go. Yep, on my cadence. Red. Set, go. Good. Very good. Not bad. A little quicker be okay. What we want to do is now take our offense to the counter action off the belly. We call this play. 33 counter. We're going to fake to the three hole. We're going to pull our left tackle, build walls, and run the tackle trap counter, working with an action from left to right. We're going to start with a bird dog. Here we go. Pre stamp. Bird dog. Set. One step. Hit. 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 Keep coming on that wall and freeze. What we want is to build a wall so our halfback can snug the power wall, snug the power wall, and come back in the direction that he came. Let's see that full speed. Fellas, that was great. Let's do it full speed now. Come on, on the hop. Come on, come on, wolf trot. Here we go. Set. Red. Set, go. Good, 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 good. Nice. Tackle, if you trap a little more inside out, the play is going to be better. Here we go. Now we're going to take a look at 33 counter with the backfield in the line. Our steps for our halfback are going to be wiggle, flat, cross, flat, as we just talked about. I want you to watch and pay special attention as our halfback snugs the power wall and also take a look at the great pod that our kids create at the, at the point of misdirection. Let's take a look. Okay, half right, half back. Could you please come up to your bird dog spot, please? Could you please come up? Good. Here we go. Bird dog. Sit. Hit. 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 Freeze. At this point, we have a half back, a quarter back, a half back, a full back. I'd like a little more inside out leverage. Okay. A tackle, a center, and a guard all in the same area. The linebacker doesn't have great vision on what's going to happen. As we continue the play, the pod will explode as our halfback snugs the wall. Hit, 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 hit. Everybody freeze. As our halfback clears the wall, we want him to come back in the same direction that he came from. And jog it out. Hit. Good. Very good. Full speed, men. Let's go. Real little earlier with your motion, right half back. 
red. Set, go. That's not bad. That's not bad. Keep working. Good. Very good, man. Very good. Now we're going to put in the play action pass off the belly and the belly, the belly counter. The first play we're going to run is the belly keep pass. We're going to run is the belly keep pass. Just like in the belly, we have to determine if it's a one or a two call. We're going to go full speed with a two call. Here we go. Offensive line, please make your calls. Full speed, down. Make your calls. Two, two. Red. Set, go. Good, good, good. As you take a look at the back side, we want our offensive line to stay shoulder square with their eyes looking outside to help back side. Very good, men. Let's line up again, and let's do this with a one call. Let's do this with a one call. Our defensive tackle will come down in the A-gap. A one-one call, aggressively attack his outside shoulder, aggressively kick into that, kick into that A-gap and stop penetration. Here we go. 333 keep with a one call. 333 keep with a one call. Hit. One, one. Sit. Hit. Excellent. Now we're going to work the belly keep pass into the back with the backfield action. We want our quarterback to try to get the ball in the seam on step five or quickly thereafter. If not, he's going to take the ball to the perimeter, attack the flank, and shoot the pivot out, which we're running at six to seven yards. Here we go. Stances. Pre-snap. Red. Set, go. Nice, nice. Beautiful. Okay. Red. Set, go. Nice, nice, beautiful, oh, very nice, very nice. Now we're going to run the counter naked. We're going to fake running counter from left to right, and we're going to have the quarterback keep the ball. The counter naked, in my estimation, is our best play action passing scheme because it most resembles the offensive run play. For this play to be great for us, our offensive linemen have to aggressively block with their helmets low, Okay, you know, run blocking posture, and our tackle has to have great, great enthusiasm as he pulls down the line and sets off the tackle. Let's take a look. Fellas, let's keep low helmets, and let's make it look like run. Sit. Look out your eyebrows. Sit. Hit. Good, good. Nice. Very good. Now our demonstration team is going to show you 333 counter naked from wing right formation. Bird dog, right halfback, please jump up to your bird dog alignment. Okay? Bird dog, sit, hit, 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 and look for the ball. Look over your outside shoulder. Here we go. Red. Set, go. Okay, red. Set, go. Much better, much better. Okay. Red. Set, go. Good, good, much better. Nice. Very good, good. That concludes the first segment. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching our first part of our series. We're now going to move to the option portion of the attack. But remember, we're a wing T offense. We want to maintain our integrity in that system as we integrate our option game. Thank you very much.